the coach. Hope you're getting some sleep with the new baby before the game. But uh, I guess just to start, what are you looking for on Saturday? What will you know or how will you know if the offense is doing what you're supposed to, what it's designed to do? Yeah, thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I do think that you're really looking for guys to go out and make some plays in the first game. But playing within the scheme, I think something that Coach Stoops has really done an unbelievable job of emphasizing with our players right now is, First game of the season, you don't need to go do anything outside of the scheme and go be a hero. Just do your job, execute at a high level, and play fast. And I think that that's what I'm looking for out of the offense. And we all are as a staff is looking for our guys to just execute, lack, you know, no pre-snap penalties, you know, penalties, you know, pre-snap or post-snap, just a clean operation is what we're looking for. Um, and obviously moving the ball and scoring points is the biggest, biggest thing, but Really, you're looking for this unit to just come out and play a clean game. And in the first game with a new offense and all that, it's not really an excuse, but there's going to be some issues, I'm sure, at some point in the game and just see how our players respond to a little adversity as well. Nick Roush. Is, is there any first game jitters? It's, it's, it's been a while since you've, you've called plays. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's – Anytime you get, you get into a game like situation, you, you get some jitters. I mean, I get jitters before every scrimmage, so I can only imagine what it'll probably be like. And but that's why we've got an unbelievable staff and guys here that can help and know me personally and, and can help just you know calm me down if if necessary. But um, it, it's a new role, it, it's a new job for me, and it's been a while since I have coordinated. But um, as of right now, not a lot of jitters. I mean, maybe Friday night going into Saturday, but. Um, when you feel confident about a game plan and, and about your guys going out and executing, typically you feel better about going into the game. Larry Vaught. Liam, I think you could probably make a lot of UK fans really happy if you just called deep downfield bombs like the first three plays and all. So are you going to let fans factor any and all of kind of how you're scripting this? I mean, do you seriously – consider, you know, you're making an, an impression right from the very start. Yeah, I think it's, it's more so, obviously, everybody wants to see the forward pass down the field. I, I totally understand that. I'd like to see that as well, but um, not at the expense of us executing. The, the worst thing you want to do is start off um, with a couple, oh, shoots or dog, dog gummits, and now you're behind the chains and behind the sticks and trying to get back on track. So, Really, we're just going to try to go into the into this game with our philosophy of being physical in the run game, trying to work our play action keepers and and our base down pass game and execute on third down in the red zone. So really not having thought too much into about the first couple plays of the game. I I, I got to believe that we're going to try to be physical and run the football and be, be, you know, be Kentucky. I mean, that's what we need to be in order to win football games in the SEC. It's not necessarily about. Uh, just flash in the past game. It's about our overall execution as an offense. Josh Moore. Hey, Liam. I know you go back a ways with Scott Woodward. What can you tell us about him? And how long has he been coaching the, the receivers? How, how long has he kind of been in charge of that group? Yeah, Scott's a guy that I played with in college. And um, he was my backup at UMass. So we have – a long-term relationship, obviously he's a good friend of mine and uh, just sees the game very similarly, you know, just adds another dimension to the receiver room of just seeing things through a quarterback's lens. And I think that that always helps with the receivers and everybody being on the same page about the quarterback's reads, his thoughts, where he's supposed to go with the ball, where he could have gone with the ball. It helps the receivers understanding because those guys uh, they do so much. They run around so much. They all want to get the ball, rightfully so. But understanding where they fit within the scheme and within each concept is something that I think helps when you have a former quarterback in the room because you can see some things through a different lens that maybe, you know, guys that have, you know, played receiver, co you know, played receiver their whole lives. It's just different. And, and, and there's some things that he can see from that lens. But I think that that room is doing a great job. And, and him and Coach Bo have done a phenomenal job. John Hale. Yeah, what has most impressed you about Wondell Robinson since you got here in, in January? His work ethic, to be honest. I mean, the way that he approaches the game, the way he approaches practice, 
I mean, the kid never dogs. He doesn't loaf. He, he does the things the right way all the time. And, and when you're talented, um, all those other things matter a lot more because there's so many talented football players, but the guys that do things the right way all the time are the guys that end up making it and, and having great careers and, and, and playing football for a long time. And I think that that's just something that's so fun about coaching Wandell is he's easy to coach. He doesn't make the same mistake m multiple times. Um, he's enthusiastic. He's energetic. And he's a smart football player. Those are the type of kids that you want to have in your program and you love to coach. Nick Roush. I, I did the baby thing pretty recently and there's uh it's fun, but that there's not a lot of sleep. Uh, <laughs> how, have you been able to grab a minute or two? What's, what's the, the first week been like juggling with game planning and game prep or did you knock a lot of game prep out before just because you knew that the baby was coming? Yeah. I appreciate that. Nick, congrats to you as well, man. Um, it, it's, we got a, a little bit of a jump on ULM uh, earlier, you know, later in training camp, we got a little bit of a jump on those guys. So we had some base initial thoughts in, um, you know, I was able to, uh, basically to help script practice from, you know, from the hospital and the, the, the staff did an unbelievable job. The one, you know, the day I wasn't able to be here, it was a great practice. They did some really good things. They kept the energy up. So really just tried to lean on the staff throughout this time. And, and, and my wife and my wife, Ashley, <laughs> and I mean, she, she's such a trooper. She does such a nice job of, uh, you know, really taking care of this whole situation at night right now. And um, while I'm not around, we've got some family in town, which has been nice, but, we were able to get a little bit of a jump on those guys early on. And yeah, I'm sleeping probably a lot more than she is. Congrats, man. Thank you. John Clay. William, congrats as well. Uh, from the time that you first got here till now going into the first game, where do you feel like the offense has made the most progress? Um, that's a really good question. I would think just overall, just throwing and catching. You know, just being on time with our decisions, route depth, um, understanding our base core concepts in the past game. And and obviously the the run game is 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 still getting better in terms of the wide zone. You know, these guys have run the ball really well over the years. And we brought in a little bit of a different scheme that they they were used to running. So um that's taking some time to get used to, but uh those guys definitely are trying to work at it and getting better at it each week. And each practice. So I would think just the overall, if you look at us from the spring till now, a lot less um, just communication issues, you know, just really being a little bit more efficient in and out of the huddle, um, you know, communicating at the line of scrimmage, uh, ball security, taking care of the football, little things like that. I think we've done a nice job of since the spring and we've added a lot, you know, we've added a lot of offense and, and we put it all in within the first few days of training camp to try to test these guys. And now that we're in game prep, it's about cleaning up some of that stuff and really honing in on what we do best. And I think that you guys, uh, you know, we'll see hopefully that those guys go out and execute at a high level on Saturday. John Wong. Liam, Mark was bragging big time on you yesterday. He was talking about how relatable you were. And we've spoken with a lot of the players and they kind of say the same thing. I mean, you're not old like Larry Vaught, but you're not a 18 years old either. So uh, why do you think you're able to connect so well with the players just coming right in? Um, I think it's something that I always, I tried to learn from my dad, who, who was my football coach in high school. And he was a division three head college coach for a bunch of years. And I really saw the way that I was on the field. I was a ball boy. I was around the game for a long time. And um, I saw the way that he interacted with his players and with, his, and with his staff. And I think that that was something that you can get your point across without being uh, abrasive. And, and you can be positive and be confident in the way that you speak to these kids and into your staff. And yeah, there's times that lose your mind a little bit, but I, I like to think, even though I, you know, 35 years old, I was, I was 18 once I did go through this process at which they're going through in terms of being a college athlete and being a student athlete at a high level, they're much higher level than I played at, but um, it gives me probably a little bit more patience at times with them, understanding that they are going through a lot, that they're being 
they're still students first coming from where I came from in the NFL. It's all ball. So, and then, uh, and then learning from Sean, the way Sean communicated with people on a day-to-day basis was something that I had never really seen before. Um, he, he was just his energy, his enthusiasm, his positivity was so contagious that it bled into the rest of the program, into the, into the culture of the team. And that's just something I'm trying to do here on offense is to create some positivity and, and create a competitive culture. Adam. Hey, Liam. Last night on Mark's coach's show, he kind of gushed about Brendan Bates. Um, said he might be one, he thinks he might be one of the best players on your all's football team. I know with that, the emergence of Isaiah Cummings, that's been a huge talking point uh, throughout fall camp, but just what does Bates bring to you all on um, the offense? Um, and how, how much of a role is he going to have this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, I love Bates. Yeah, similar to Coach Stoops, I would say he's one of my favorites on the offense for sure. I mean, he's just the type of kid that does everything right. He wants to do everything right. He works his tail off. He can run block. He can catch. You know, he's better uh, as a run after catch guy than you would think he'd be. Um, he's just a, he's just such a good kid, the kind of kid you want to see have success. So I, I would think that these tight ends should have some success in the system and trying to get them involved is definitely something that we're, we're working at doing going into this season. So uh, really couldn't say enough good things about Brendan. He just um, comes to work every day, puts his head down, doesn't say much, and just gets it done. And um, I'm really excited to see him you know, cut it loose on Saturday. Okay, I got time for one more. Jeff Drummond, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Liam, wanted to go back to your, your comment earlier about B Kentucky. It's been a little bit surprising how little we've talked about Chris Rodriguez uh, leading up to this season. When you say B Kentucky, that kind of jumps out at me is give that guy the rock and, and kind of let him establish things. Absolutely. I mean, that's the biggest thing about – trying to win football games at any, at any level, but especially at this high of a level, you've got to be able to run the football. I don't care how many times you throw it. You've got to be able to be physical when you need to be and still run the football when you need to be. And I'm a crazy man if I don't hand the ball to those backs. So um, just trying to continue to work on balance when you do have those guys in the backfield and feel good about the guys up front, but still trying to get better in the pass game, it's okay, how do we continue to work on that balance? especially going into a first game, um, you know, the things that you're trying to improve on, you want to try to see some tangible evidence of. Um, and, and Chris has just done such a good job, especially the last week. I would say Chris has really amped up his laser focus, his just approach to practice, his finishing of runs. So he, I, I've got to believe Chris, Chris Rodriguez is going to be ready to go, and I'm excited to see him go on Saturday. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. And, again, congratulations on your new addition. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate your time.